I'm now going to see that I can do the same thing to this statement that I did to this one. First thing, I'm going to subtract the mean and divide by the square root of the variance. I've got beta 1 hat minus beta 1 divided by the square root of sigma squared times 1 over the sum of the square differences on x. Follows a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 1. Okay, what else? If I realize that I don't know what sigma squared is, then I can substitute in for sigma squared some estimate of that quantity, which in this context, the simple linear regression context, we typically don't just call s squared, because that would be ambiguous as a bunch of things we could take the variance of. We typically call it sigma squared hat. So now I'm going to say that beta 1 hat minus beta 1 divided by the square root of sigma hat squared times 1 over the sum of the square differences on x should follow a t-distribution. This time, instead of saying that it follows a t-distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom, we're going to point out that it follows a t-distribution with n minus 2 degrees of freedom, because that's the denominator that we use to estimate the sigma squared here, just like n minus 1 was the denominator we used to estimate the s squared there. Another way to think about it is that we have n minus 1 degrees of freedom here, because we used up one piece of information estimating the mean here. We used up two pieces of information because we're in the simple linear regression context, and by the time we got to this point, we've estimated both the slope and the intercept. So pausing, pausing, we can do a hypothesis test here. For any particular value of the slope that you might be interested in, most commonly the null hypothesis that the slope is equal to zero, I can calculate this quantity. I can take my estimate of the slope, subtract the null value, such as zero, divide by this denominator, and compare it to a t-distribution to get a p-value. If my null hypothesis is that the slope is equal to zero, but this quantity is really big, then I can get a big t-statistic, therefore a small p-value, and have evidence contradicting the assumption that the slope is actually equal to zero. If I have a really big slope, this uh, is going to lead to a small p-value, and I can reject that null that the slope is equal to zero. If you have some scientific reason for testing a different null hypothesis, such as that the slope is equal to four, you could plug in a four here as well and see if you have evidence contradicting the assumption that the slope is equal to four. So you can do a hypothesis test for the slope um, using what we've written here. If your interest is in a particular slope and whether the, the slope of the simple linear regression is equal to that, um, you can do the hypothesis test. Similarly, following what we've written over here, we can get a confidence interval. And we're going to do it in exactly the ways we've been doing before. I can take beta 1 hat. I'm going to add or subtract the cutoff from the t distribution, which is approximately equal to 2, as long as the sample size is pretty big, beta 1 hat plus or minus 2 times this quantity here, the square root of sigma hat squared times 1 over the sum of xi minus x bar squared. Okay. And the idea is that the probability that this interval includes the true value is 0.95. If my goal is to do a hypothesis test for the value of the slope, or if my goal is to get a confidence interval for the slope, I can use these methods that I have here. Note that this quantity right here is just what we refer to as the standard error. Okay, so I could also say beta 1 hat plus or minus 2 times the standard error. That's just my square, the square root of the estimate of the variance of my particular parameter estimate. That's the standard error. There are many reasons we might be running a regression. Often my interest is not in estimating the slope or in estimating the intercept because I could go through a parallel process for the intercept if I wanted to. It's just not as interesting. But often, that's not actually what I care about. I don't want a p-value for the slope. I don't want a p-value for the intercept. Because actually, can I run a regression is not a research question. And often, I don't care exactly what the slope is. What I'm interested in is what the slope and the intercept together imply about y and the mean of y. Here's our expression for what we'd expect to see for the estimated slope if we were to repeatedly sample from the model. And in parallel, I can write down an expression for the intercept. 
that if I repeatedly sample from the model and write down the intercept, those intercepts should follow a normal distribution centered at the truth with a particular variance. That variance is bigger if the residual variance is bigger, smaller if the residual variance is smaller, and similarly to the quantity that we use for the variance of beta 1 hat. If I have more data points that are more spread apart, this overall variance is smaller. And in this case, I've also got the value of x bar itself in the expression. Why? Because if you think about what we're doing, when we try to estimate the intercept, we're trying to estimate what value y would have as its average when x is equal to 0. If most of the data points are really close to 0, that's not going to be too hard. But if most of the data points are very far from 0, that's going to be harder, and there's going to be more variance in my estimate. And that's the reason why x bar is part of the expression for the variance of beta 0. So that's fine. So if you really felt like it, you could do a confidence interval or a hypothesis test for beta 0. In my experience, those are not too useful, typically. However, what if the quantity I'm interested in is the mean of y given some particular value of x. Let's do it this way. x is equal to some value we'll call x naught. By our model, we know that that's equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x naught. But if we're trying to estimate this quantity, if we're trying to estimate this quantity, one particular set of notation that's sometimes used is to put a mu hat here to say the estimated mean of y given that x is at x naught. Well, I'd estimate that by plugging in my estimates of beta 0 and beta 1. And that makes sense. That if I have this estimate of where the line is, then if you give me x and I'm trying to estimate the mean of y given x, I'm just going to find the dot on that line. So that's OK. But if I repeatedly sample from a population distribution and each time get a different data set containing x's and y's, and each time I have a different data set fit that line with a certain slope and intercept, each possible sample is going to lead to a slightly different slope and intercept. And so if my overall goal is to predict the mean of y when x is equal to 3, every possible data set that I could have sampled will lead to a slightly different estimate, a slightly different value of beta 0 hat plus beta 1 hat times 3. So just like we can talk about how the slope estimates vary over different possible data sets you could have, and just like we can talk about how the intercept estimates vary over different possible data sets you could have, we can talk about how the intercept plus the slope times x naught varies over different possible samples that we could have. Turns out that by the central limit theorem, if we did the simulation, we would get a normal distribution. The values we get for our estimates of the mean of y given a certain value of x, and I'll write this notation again here to make sure it's clear, given x equals x naught. Those estimates would follow a normal distribution centered at the truth, centered at the true intercept plus the true slope times x naught. Okay. So we're not done yet because we've got to write down the value needed for the variance. But I want you to see here first, I want you to see here first, that every time I get a different data set, I would estimate a slightly different line. And if I use that slightly different line to plug in 3 and see what value I get on the line, the mean of y given x is equal to 3, that's going to lead to a slightly different value each time, but on average on average, it's going to lead to the true answer, the value of the true intercept plus the true slope times x. And it's going to follow a normal distribution centered around that value with some variance. The quantity that we'll write here for the variance is sigma squared times 1 over n plus x naught minus x bar squared divided by the sum of square differences on x. Okay. 